Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my physiology playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about osmosis. Today, we'll talk about osmotic pressure. And in the next video, we'll compare between osmolality and osmolarity. So let's get started. First, let me start by answering the questions of the previous video. Here's the first question. You have compartment A and compartment B with a semi-permeable membrane in between. Okay. And then, if you wait, what's gonna happen? Of course, water will flow from low concentration of solids to high concentration of solids, making E the correct answer. The second question, calculate the osmolality. It should be osmolarity, but clinically we don't care. First one will be to osmos per liter because one for sodium, one for chloride. This is just one for glucose because it's not ionizable, but it's half a liter, so you multiply by two. And the last one is complicated. The answer is 30. Please watch my previous video to learn how to do it. So what is osmosis? Osmosis is simple diffusion of water. Simple diffusion of water. Define simple diffusion from high concentration of water to low concentration of water across the membrane. Or you can do this. Water movement from low concentration of solute to high concentration of solid. It's the same exact thing. Because when there is lots of sodium in the extracellular fluid, water is going to flow to the extracellular fluid. So from the area of low concentration of solute to the area of high concentration of solute. It needs no energy, it needs no carrier, because it's a simple diffusion. What is the osmotic pressure? Some people can say it's the pressure that causes osmosis, which is true, but it's very difficult to measure that. So we define it as the pressure needed to stop osmosis. I'm so confused right now. Remember Newton's third law of motion? For every action in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, let's say that this car is moving at 70 miles per hour, and this car is moving at 70 miles per hour in the opposite direction. When they collapse, okay, there is no displacement to this direction or to this direction. They are just gonna crash here. Maybe they gonna like do this, okay? Just go upwards, but no car is gonna push the other to the other side. It's not gonna happen because they are traveling at the same velocity in two opposite directions. This is the Newton's third law of motion. So it's hard to measure the pressure of osmosis, but it's easy to measure the pressure to stop osmosis. We keep increasing the pressure, increasing the pressure, increasing the pressure until the osmosis stops. This is the osmotic pressure. Now, the osmotic pressure depends on the number of molecules, not the mass, not the size of molecules, the number. Why is that? It's complicated. With medicosis, it's gonna be easy. Osmotic pressure depends on the number. Remember, in physics, there is something called momentum. It's equal to mass times volume. So, if you have a small car, M1 is small, but V1 is huge. If you have a semi-truck, M2 is huge, V2 is relatively small. So, momentum, P1 for the car equals P2 for the semi-truck. That's what we care about. We care about the number. Both of them are vehicles, so we care about the number. So if glucose is telling you, I'm a bigger molecule than sodium, I should be more osmotically active. Tell him to shut up. We only care about numbers. And sodium is all over the place. It's the major, major ion. So let's perform a fifth grade experiment. Okay, bring a U-shaped tube and fill it with water, knowing that there is a semi-permeable membrane between the two compartments. Step number two, add a solute to compartment X only. Step three, notice what will happen. Water is gonna flow from the area of low concentration of solute to the area of high concentration of solute. So the end result is here. Water in compartment Y is gonna move down and compartment X is gonna move up. The difference is called the osmotic pressure. Put one mole of glucose in water and you get glucose. Put one mole of Cl2 in water, you get Cl plus Cl, two osmoles. That's why we call them osmoles. Osmosis caused by a mole. Osmosis caused by a mole. Remember also, osmotic pressure depends on the number, not the mass of molecules. The number, the number. If glucose is telling you I'm bigger, we couldn't care less. So let's have some definitions. Osmosis, simple diffusion of water from high concentration of water to low concentration of water across a semi-permeable membrane. Osmotic pressure, the pressure needed to stop osmosis. It's directly proportional to number of particles. 
the higher the number of particles, the greater the osmotic pressure. Let's say you have lots of sodium, lots of sodium, lots of sodium. What's going to happen to osmosis or osmotic pressure? It's going to go up. Second thing is volume. It's inversely related to volume. The higher the volume, the less the osmotic pressure. Because when you have a higher volume, the sodium is relatively diluted. Got it? Again, a small osmosis caused by a mole. Normal plasma osmolality is 290 milliosmol per liter. Number of particles over the volume. Osmolality is the amount of force per volume measured in milliosmoles per kilogram or millimole per kilogram. What about osmolarity? This is the topic of next video. How to measure osmotic pressure? Are you ready for some physics? Okay, now get the same U-shaped tube. Pot this solute only in X. Water is gonna flow from Y to X. And here is the osmotic pressure. Measure it like get your three-year-old cousin with his ruler and measure this height. It's gonna be 26 and a, and a quarter centimeters which you measure using your cousin's ruler of what of water but now you know like f physicists are like dr watson they are super sophisticated and they'll tell you we have a standardized measuring unit and it's called millimeter mercury you have to get this in millimeter mercury okay you put water against mercury so that this h1 the height of water equals the same height of water that you got from the first experiment which was about 26 centimeters of water you put them here and as you know at the same horizontal level p1 which is pressure on the point one equals p2 which is pressure on the point two then pressure equals rho gh density of water g which is the acceleration for gravity and h is the height of water above p1 equals rho 2 which is the density of mercury g same g h2 the height of mercury here now you see g on both sides you can cancel them together h2 which is the height in mercury what we would like to know equals h1 times rho 1 over rho 2 h1 is 26.25 the density of water is 1 the density of mercury is 13.6 times that of water h2 is if you calculate this it's going to be 1.93 centimeters of mercury but we need it in millimeter mercury which is the easiest thing ever so it's 19 times 10. so the moral of this story is if we say that one osmol causes a height of water by 26 centimeter water then one osmol causes an osmotic pressure of 19.3 millimeter mercury so the plasma osmotic pressure equals osmolality times 19.3 290 times 19.3 you have this around 5500 millimeter mercury this is the plasma osmotic pressure in millimeter mercury if you wanted in milliosmoles per liter easy it's 290 no one ever in history is gonna explain it to you like this i know i'm a very humble person who controls your body's osmolality hormones such as adh nervous systems through your thirst sensation fluid and electrolyte balance as base system yada 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 so let's summarize osmosis simple diffusion of water osmotic pressure pressure needed to stop osmosis the normal plasma osmotic pressure is around 5500 osmol osmosis caused by a mole osmolality the amount of force per volume measured in milliosmoles per kilogram or milliosmoles per liter in cases of osmolarity which we're going to talk about in next video plasma osmolality 290 normally milliosmoles per liter per volume per volume force per volume this is called measured osmolality don't confuse this with, with calculated osmolality and we will discuss this later the most significant plasma osmol is sodium it's the major acf cation water follows sodium as you know from the previous lecture so cell swells or cell shrinks if it happens to be your brain you get mental status abnormalities and the mnemonic is sodium problems cns problems okay my favorite part of the lecture clinical take home points plasma oncotic pressure is a subtype of osmotic pressure which makes sense there are forces here hydrostatic pressure is trying to force fluid outside of your blood vessel oncotic pressure is gonna keep your fluid inside the blood vessel 
Which one is winning under normal conditions? The answer is oncotic pressure to keep the fluid inside your freaking blood vessels. But when you have a disease, okay, such as edema, this, this is a disruption of the system. But normally, oncotic pressure is winning over the hydrostatic pressure and normally by around 10 millimeters mercury. Now, this is different in the kidney. So if this is, is the glomerulus, the hydrostatic pressure is winning. Why? Because we need to filter water through the kidney nephrons. So it depends. This, this oncotic pressure is mainly caused by albumin. So hypoalbuminemia, no oncotic pressure, you end up with fluid flowing out of the blood vessel and accumulating in the interstitial space leading to edema. What are the causes of decreased oncotic pressure? They are the causes of hypoalbuminemia. What if you are not eating protein such as squash your core disease? Are you going to get edema? Of course. How about you peeing the protein out such as nephrotic syndrome? Or don't forget miniature disease, which is nephrotic syndrome of your gut. I've talked about it in a separate video. Make sure to check it out. If you are increasedly pooping protein out, such as malabsorption syndrome. Decreased synthesis of albumin, such as in liver disease, let's say cirrhosis. Plasma loss in third degree burns. You're losing plasma with the plasma proteins, mainly albumin. You end up with edema. Transudates, such as all of these, they produce pitting edema when you press on it and leave your finger it's gonna stay there for a while exudate is gonna produce non-pitting pitting edema lymphedema is a non-pitting edema as well what are causes of lymphedema filariasis such as wuchereria bancrofti radiation post radical mastectomy for ladies with breast cancer infection and cancer they block the lymphatics Hyperosmolality can lead to coma, such as hyperglycemic coma. So, in cases of this handsome doctor, why is he having edema at the end of the day? Because he is always walking in the hospital all day, and fluid is gonna accumulate in the dependent part of him, which is his legs. This is called increased hydrostatic pressure, not decreased oncotic pressure. Big difference. Why the accumulation of fluid is in his legs, not in his head? It's called gravity. This is that dependent part of him. You can get my antibiotics course by going to medicosisperfectionaries.com. It has 40 videos with their notes and cases. Next, we'll talk about osmolality versus osmolarity. So please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course and my electrolytes course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.